Well, the Tuesday, January 16, 2018 meeting of the Wilmot Public Library District, uh, please come to order. Madam Secretary, would you please call the order? Absolutely. Roll. Trustee Wolf? Here. Trustee Barges? Yes. Here. Trustee O'Laughlin? Here. Trustee McDonald? Here. Trustee Rogers? Here. And Trustee George? Here. <laughs> um, First item is to approve the uh, November minutes located behind attachment one. So moved. Is the agenda no so moved. Can I get a second? Aye. Um, Lisa seconded? Yes. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. The minutes are approved. No presentations today. Public comment? Uh, none. Move on to the treasurer's report. Ron. Yes, not much money came into the library in the November, December. Um, we received $16,000 in real estate taxes in November and 46000 in Kenilworth Library uh, installments in December from their library taxes. Um, but other than that, it was pretty quiet. Um, there very likely will be more real estate tax revenue in January because of the changes in the tax law. People who paid the first installment for 2018 in 2017 for tax purposes will result in an earlier payment to us for the first part of 2018. Um, but other than that, things were pretty much uh, where they normally would be expected to be. Um, and uh, we're at about 42% of uh, budget uh, halfway through the year. So things are pretty much as we would expect. Um, the only items we need to act on is approval of the bills and salaries for November and December. And the only question is, do you want those as separate motions or would a single motion do? Separate. OK, then I move the approval of the November bills and salaries. Second. Go ahead, Mr. Okay. Um, Madam Secretary, could you call the roll on that? Sure. Mm. Trustee George? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee McDonald? Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin? Aye. Trustee Barshas? Yes. Trustee Wolf? Yes. I move approval of the December bills and salary. Can I get a second? A second? So, yes. Oh, so, no. <laughs> that was Junior. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was Junior. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jan, can you call the roll on that one? Uh huh. Trustee George? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Yes. Trustee McDonald? Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin? Aye. Trustee Barshas? Aye. Trustee Wolf? Aye. Um, includes the Treasury Report action items. Um, authorization for the library to close for a staff institute on March 9th. Um, I guess, could I get a motion to close the I'll library? Motion that. Okay. Could I get a second? Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it means good. Do you have a few words you want to say on the um, on what the, the, topic. Plan, the plan agenda is? Because <laughs> of the big catalog migration it, through CCS, that's going to be a big significant part of the day this year is to get everyone trained on the new catalog system. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> it sounds like an exciting day. Exciting. It's a true work day. And that's a Friday. Correct. Mm -hmm. Um, the next item is authorization for Trustee McDonald to attend PLA. As you recall, we sort of have to approve things for trustees these days specifically. Mm -hmm. So I could get a motion to, it's really not to approve her going, she can go, but it's to approve covering the her expenses. Yes. Right, right. <laughs> so I'm old. sure she'd like to. Second. Who is Where that, is Ron? it, by the way? Ron. Philadelphia. Oh, Ron and Jan. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I guess that's money. I guess we have to have a roll call on that, oh, Jan. Okay. okay. Trustee George. Aye. Trustee Rogers. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Can I vote? Trust on me? Yes. Aye. <laughs> Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. Trustee Barges, yes. Trustee Wolf. Aye. Um, resolute. Uh, I'm, okay. I'm sorry, then. who seconded that? I think it was Ron. 
I have him as moving. And then I think I think did I, you, did. I think Jan. Oh, Jan. Jan. That's oh, right. Okay. Thank you, Jan. I'm sorry. Okay, the next item is um, resolution number 2017-18193, uh, authorization to transfer to the Building Equipment Reserve Fund located behind attachment uh, five. Um, this is an annual transfer that we made. Uh, we make if there were any funds available and required to be transferred. It's in the amount of $350,000. Could I get a motion to approve the ordinance? So moved. Could I get a second? I'll second it. Um, any discussion? Um, it's been moved and seconded. Um, Jan, can you call the roll? On mm -hmm. this one? Trustee George. Aye. Trustee Rogers. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin. Aye. Trustee Barshus. Yes. Trustee Wolf. Yes. <laughs> Um, the next action item is ordinance number 2017-18187. It's an ordinance confirming previous approval of a policy prohibiting har harassment, discrimination, and retaliation. My understanding is that this is something we are, we, we have a policy, uh, but we now are supposed to have an, an, an a specific ordinance confirming that policy um, so this is the policy it's been in effect under our policies and procedures for some time um, but now we are it, it's required that we adopt an ordinance ordinance on that and I'm sure I mean I did it took some time to read it and go over it and I think it you know, obviously, it's a very timely time to make sure that we address these issues mm -hmm. um, as publicly and as prominently as we can. So with that in mind, could we have a motion to approve the ordinance? I have some questions, but I'm happy to make a motion to approve it. I just have some questions to discuss. Okay, let's get it on. <coughs> and then can I get a second? I second. <coughs> okay, it's been approved in second. Discussion. Um, First of all, I was just curious, like, this document has, has been exi in existence as worded. I didn't know if it, where it comes from or it comes from a place that makes it legally sound. The fact that Kathleen read it makes me feel good because I figure it's legally, you know, which, which is important. And then just secondly, there are two things. Number one, on page 50, um, it says any whistleblower who believes he or she is being retaliated against must contact the library immediately, whereas previously in other language portions it mentioned the library, bo uh, library the board of trustees or the library director, and there just says the library. So I didn't know if it mattered from any language standpoint if it, that should be clarified more to say to say again oh. mm -hmm. it should say library director and board of trustees again or something different I don't know but but that was you know Stuart there are a couple of times I read through here and it talks about a sort of a chain of plan how to raise an issue yes and it's very clear for example on the financial things that anyone has the right to raise things to the board if for whatever reason they feel that that's the right way for them to raise an issue. But it isn't spelled out. It's, it's spelled out pretty clearly in some whistleblower things like that, but it's not right. well, spelled it says, out. It says language above, it says library director or the or the board, but here it just says the library, so I didn't right. know. Right, and that, I yeah. sort of had the same question too, and I'm, I'd like to sort of adopt it by ordinance right now, but okay. maybe there are a few spots where we should make it explicit that an employee has the right. What choices they can make and whom they, who they contact. That they could yeah. bring it to the board president, I get, would guess. Yeah, I think you need to give yeah, some kind it, of option uh, in, there. At any time. Now, what I would do is I would call the attorney <laughs> or who's ever president. You then get on the phone with the attorney. What would you do if, if, if there was a human resource person, which is, I know, is in Heather's pan, would they go to the human resource person? They could have that option, too. See, I said that makes yeah. sense to me as well. All, all, all thing I'm concerned about is just to make sure it's clear to anybody who has yeah. an issue that they have, they know immediately who they can contact right. and, have an, you know, and have an easy, you know, well, versus to is, say the library. This all. is part of a personnel manual. Okay. So, so it's it's not in the policy manual, it's in the personnel manual, okay. which is um, approved as a whole by this board, which the last time you approved the revision was around the time I'd started, so it was probably mm -hmm. March, February, March is when you approved the, the last revision. But 
things change fairly quickly in personnel manuals, so I think you'll probably see it's, we, you can see the whole thing again this year Great. as well, and then we could tweak so some of the we'll language at that time. Okay, that's if you're that's, fine oh, with that. that's perfectly fine. Uh, I just wanted, especially yeah. after we have an HR person, because I think there's other things in that personnel manual that they're going to want to tweak language wise. That's great. I just want I just was addressing because I thought there's another thought, factor. In I thought terms we're still reviewing it. That's all. Yeah. This yeah. type of language, and that is that it often is left ambiguous because you don't know what the target of the perceived complaint is. And so it's generally left open-ended in this situation so that if it's the library board that is the source of the complaint or if it's the library director who is the person who's being complained about or some other person, it stays flexible enough that the individual can make their request that it be followed up based on the circumstances of the complaint. This is exactly what I wanted to make sure I got addressed because I want to make sure that the person feels comfortable and safe in who they do that they, so it's yeah. just clearly but There's stated. not one person you exactly. could designate right. always because right. any one of those people could be the target of the complaint. Exactly, but, right. But that's but here when it just says the library, I just want to make yeah. sure it was clear enough to the whistleblower that they knew who to go to. And mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. the second question along those lines well, is that, well, oh. Yeah, can I? Yeah. Can I, I mean, the library with a capital L means somebody in the top order? Um, or, I mean, can you just tell your whoever you're working with downstairs? I just don't. It depends you know, don't on the, the circumstances of that particular whistleblower situation. So whistleblower policies tend to leave where to make the initial complaint mm -hmm. open because you don't know what the target of the complaint is going to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so you're and I did run about this by our lawyer, just okay. so you know, okay. like, um, he gave us the boilerplate template for the ordinance mm -hmm. and um, he then I, I sent him our policies so that he could that, make that, sure yeah. that it was, so it is in compliance, but mm -hmm. Clarity is important, so I I'm happy to bring it back to you at okay. another point. Um, yeah, I think we should. I, I didn't be want to make a big that. deal of it. I just wanted to make sure that mm -hmm. to your to your every, all your points here, just the idea being that the whistle, the whoever whistleblower goes to the person at the library, whoever whomever it happens to be, knows how to take that information, exactly. keep it confidential, mm -hmm. and get it to somebody that's mm -hmm. safe for the whistleblower, and will bring the process right. forward. And and then the second point was I, I don't know if it matters, but it, it is listed. I don't I don't expect you ever to be the source of a problem, Heather, but it does say that if the director there's a the director will designate somebody to be there the person to be if they if somebody has a complaint against the director they'll designate somebody else to be someone the whistleblower can go to if they don't want to go to the director mm -hmm. that says they're I just didn't know if it that seems would be. it also seems just a little odd that if you're the person and right. then you know you could just appoint your henchman to be the investigator <laughs> but you know again pretty unlikely and and yeah but, um, but just so we have it clearly well, in a safe it uh, says, safely stated in a way that yeah makes the library it, director yeah. or her or his designee in the event that the library director is the accused so well, again, I think it's like Ron says, it's just for flexibility because you just don't know what yeah. you can do. Well, you can all put the in if then language too, like if yeah. the complaint just is against the director, then you can go to the board president or vice versa. Right, right. We might want to be a little more maybe. specific. If, if we're going to have the language. Make it too, that they can contact the board, the president. board president or vice president mm -hmm. or really, yeah. You know. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there should be some clarity as to what we're supposed to do exactly. in that incident. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, and again, so I think probably, once we I, have my an reaction HR would be to person. contact the attorney. If, if the person wants stepping outside, I would call the attorney and say, all right, what's our, what's, what is our next step now? Yeah, and that makes perfect sense. I mean, that, but just so again, there's again in the world we live in today, there's just unfortunately there are circumstances where things arise, and we want to make sure that whoever, if someone is the mm -hmm. victim of something or a potential, that they know the path they can take that keeps them confident, keeps them mm -hmm. uh, anonymous, and, and keeps and knows the process, the, the path to take. So based upon this discussion, I think we'd sort of like to see this again maybe later in the year. Mm -hmm. Uh, but at the same time, I think it would be good if we adopt the ordinance right now. Right. Yes. Definitely. Right. Well, so we're legally the, required. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 So I think we, it's been moved and seconded. Yes. We had some discussion. And let's have a vote on this. I think this can be a One useful. One other point I would, I would suggest is that the 
in seeking clarification, we should also determine or confirm that the whistleblower policy calls for the appropriate hearing and protections of confidentiality uh, yeah, until the process is here, concluded. Like I don't it. know yeah. mm -hmm. how much our whistleblower policy addresses those issues, but it would be appropriate to assure that they're also addressed. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So with an instruction to sort of let's look at this again well, it in says a few months. Whistleblower month. protections are provided in two important areas, confidentiality and against retaliation. Mm -hmm. Insofar as possible, the confidentiality of the whistleblower will be maintained on Well, we don't activity. know from this whether or not the whistleblower policy carries through to a hearing or a, you know, an investigation. Those policies ought to just be verified so that you know that they meet our intention. But I think we can, for tonight, and, we'll just... Mm -hmm. Right, we can adopt it for tonight. But yes. Yeah. Those are, if we're going to follow it up anyway, those are things that we ought to... You mean the investigation people. procedure on page 48? What's that? The investigation procedure? Right. Hmm. 